Industrial Defender, through our strategic relationship with AVB, has recently had our Automation Systems Manager product tested and verified on AVB's 800XA system. Today we'd like to show you a brief demonstration of how you might better manage your automation systems environment, including your ABB equipment, using Industrial Defender's Automation Systems Manager. Hello, this is Mike Dugan of Industrial Defender, and I'll be providing a brief demonstration highlighting some of the integration that we've done with ABB System 800XA. What we're looking at here is the dashboard of Industrial Defender's Automation Systems Manager. Just for a quick overview for those of you who haven't seen a demonstration in the past, the widgets that you're looking at on the screen are customizable and interactive, and we have quite a few of them that you can add to the screen. Um, what I've decided to use is a couple of widgets on the left-hand side that give me an overview of the different events that are coming into the environment. So I have a 24-hour history of events based on category and based on priority. And those are interactive. I can click into one of those widgets and get specific detail about the events in question. In the middle of the screen, I have an overview of the different types of assets that I'm managing through this Automation Systems Manager. On the top middle, you see asset distribution by type. Um, this is configurable based on customer needs. You could have it set to say application servers, operator workstations, etc. Just because of the different types of systems we're interacting with, I have this organized by a combination of vendor and type of asset. So you'll see uh, Ventix Network Manager there at the top. Um, you'll see some generic domain controller, or demo workstation, demo servers in the middle. And down by the bottom there, you'll see some more of the ABB stuff, the ABB RTU, Process Portal B, and the 800XA systems that we'll be looking at today. Um, and then down below that, you'll see an overview of the distribution by operating system. Um, so you see Windows XP 7 2008, a couple different flavors of Linux and then some of the more embedded operating systems that you'll find in switches and routers and firewalls, etc. And then on the right hand side I just have some other widgets that detail information that's interesting to me. On the top right hand side you see asset distribution by configuration exception. Um, configuration exception means that something on one of those devices has changed. So I have seven devices somewhere in my demonstration environment that have had a change in the ports and services that are open on the system three systems in the environment that have a change to asset details or software installed in the system or patches and then one that has had a change in user accounts. And then on the bottom right hand side of the screen I have an overview of unauthorized access attempts in the last 24 hours and what you see there in the middle is somewhere in the range of 8 to 12 hours ago there were five unauthorized access attempts on one of my systems. Uh, just like the event widgets these asset and change widgets are also interactive so if I was to click on one of the bars in one of those charts it would bring me to that specific data so for the unauthorized access alerts down in the bottom right if I clicked on that bar I'd have an overview of those five events. What we're going to focus on today is specifically the data that we're collecting from the 800XA systems. So I'm going to move over to the asset management tab and look at asset administration. This asset administration screen, which I currently have sorted by IP address, will give me an overview of all of the different devices that I'm communicating with. You can see here the asset name, asset type, IP address, uh, data collector is the Industrial Defender Advanced Service Appliance, or SIM, that is collecting the data, um, the operating system type, the location, the status of the asset, and its classification. What I'm going to do here is actually organize this data based on asset type so that it's easy for me to find the specific device that I'm looking for, ABB 800XA. If I click on that, I'll see that I have two systems in the environment. Both have the same asset name. One is a primary, one is a backup of system 800XA. I'm going to click on one of these and we'll go over the different data that we've collected from these systems. So what you see on this screen is an overview of the different configurations, both current and historical, for this device. We do keep historical configurations. What that means is anytime the information of this system changes, if new software is installed, new patches are installed, uh, new ports open up, the firewall rules change, the user accounts change, if any of that data changes, you're going to get a notification up on that main screen via those configuration exceptions. If you choose to accept that change to the configuration, a new current configuration in here will be created and the historical configuration will then be available for later review. 
just an overview of some of the data that we're collecting. If I go to asset details, this will show you details of the operating system that's installed, the manufacturer and model, the DNS settings, um, and a couple of the login statistics. If I move over to software installed, you'll get an overview of exactly that, all of the software that's installed in the system. Uh, you can see here for this 800XA system, um, there's a wide range of ABB specific and 800XA specific applications. Um, more than you would typically see on a system just because this demonstration system that I'm using is a condensed version of the entire suite of system 800XA devices into one single virtual machine. So most of the time this, these applications would be spread out among many systems. If even if there wasn't to be new software installed or software removed, but if somebody was to just update any of the software and a new version number came about, you would also get a notification of that. And it's not shown on the screen, but we also keep track of changes to the software based on the date of installation. So we keep track of that installation date as well, and that's available through our reporting engine. Um, we also keep track of patches that are deployed in the system. Um, I haven't deployed too many on here. Uh, this is a virtual machine that I just received, but what you can see is some of the patches I have deployed, we get the patch ID. Um, if there's a specific service pack for that patch, you'll see that in the service pack in effect. And then the comment, we do our best to scrape details about that specific patch and place it in that comment field. And that comment field is also interactive, so if you want to put a different comment, especially if that patch is mitigating a specific vulnerability, or if you have a note that you want to make in case of a future audit, you can change that comment field to replace or include new information. Ports and service is an important one. This is one that we typically get the most questions over and is sometimes the most complicated to keep your fingerprint of. Uh, what we're looking at here is all of the ports that are open on the system. And then the protocol and IP version, of course, the interface that the port is open on. So this is a dual home device. Um, so you'll see the IP address of 0000 when it's set up on every system. The IP address of a specific interface for the dual homing and then 127001, the home address for ports that are open specifically internally. And then when we can gather the information, we also have the process that's keeping that port open. Um, it's typically a little bit more detailed when we're using a Unix or AIX or HPUX device as compared to a Windows device where there's a lot of unknowns and sometimes it'll just say uh, a ser service host.exe and that's not really telling you that much. For most Windows devices, we'll also get an overview of all of the Windows firewall rules. Uh, you see the source and destination address, or in this case, uh, network interface, uh, the action of the rule, the service that's being enabled or disabled, and then the actual status of the rule. Once again, this is important that if you ever have a vulnerability or some type of malicious software that makes a modification to your Windows firewall, uh, you're going to catch that via our monitoring. You will see, you will get a configuration exception that one of these Windows firewall rules has changed. And then under user accounts, you'll get an overview of all of the accounts that are on the system, whether they're local or domain users, and then if they're domain users, the domain that they're set up in, and then of course whether the account is enabled or disabled. This is frequently an area that during first initial installation a lot of our customers catch accounts specific to factory acceptance testing or factory accounts in general that should no longer be on the system that may not have been removed yet. And this is a great place to find those and get them either disabled or, or removed. We have a lot of tools available that give you the ability to use this data once you have it. Um, so if I go up to configuration, ports and services search, in here, and this will be more important once you have a vast array of 800XA systems and not the just one that I have, and so I'll run this search running against the uh, full group of systems in my environment, not just the 800XA systems, but uh, say you have a particular concern with a vulnerability that may be spreading through the corporate environment and you know that it spreads over port 445 TCP and you want to see every host in the environment that it has that specific port open. If I just type in port 445 and run a search, you'll get an overview of every system in the environment that has that specific port open. Now, I said I was most concerned with 445 TCP in this instance, so the first thing I'll do is I'll group it by protocol. And then I can 
expand that and see each of the instances of port 445 TCP open in the environment. If I wanted to break that down further, for example, by operating system, I could then just add another filter. From here, I can see that this port 445 TCP is open on a variety of Windows systems from 2003 and XP up to 7 and 2008. We also give you the ability to do the same type of query for applications or for patches. Um, a good example of this is if you get a report of a specific vulnerability with a specific application or even a specific version of an application, you can use this query to find every instance of that specific application anywhere in the environment. Since we're dealing with 800XA today, what I'll do is I'll select an 800XA specific application or group of applications. We'll say this 800XA base application. And then from here, if you wanted to group this, say by version number, do that and here I see every different version of this application in the environment. Let me resize that to fit it all on one line. Um, and you could do this with any type of application and if maybe you have a specific version that has a vulnerability, you can quickly identify not just the application and what systems have it, but if that application is at that specific version. And then through our configuration exception process, you'll get notified when you've mitigated that vulnerability by updating that application. This demonstration looked at some of the basic things that you could do with some of the data that we've collected from the system 800XA. If you'd like a more in-depth demonstration, including looking at events, and especially those events that are specific to the 800XA environment, or maybe looking at some of the policy or compliance reporting, contact Industrial Defender or ABB to schedule a more in-depth demonstration. Thank you.